we saw, for instance, in our mold studies, uh, the peak frequency you know, of, of these different waveforms in the front of the brain, whereas electroactivity was slowed and even collapsed, meaning it seemed not very, didn't like it wasn't flexible, it was, uh, you might say, sampling at a slower rate, <laughs> uh, you know, your brain's not quite as sharp, and we believe that's because it's not getting enough juice from the brain stem to keep it aroused. A little bit like an attention deficit child, they don't get enough, in, you know, much cortical arousal as they need, that's why they give them stimulants. While some of the mold patients or pesticide patients, they all look like the same way, like they're not getting enough arousal, especially in the frontal areas. On the other hand, sometimes we saw in more central areas that map out how you feel and what you, you know, motor and sensory, sometimes we saw the opposite, hyperarousal. We call it cortical irritability, uh, hypersensitivity to sounds and chemicals, pains. Um, a lot of people would believe that's compensatory. In other words, when you see a lot of flurry of activity, it usually means something underneath that's not working. Mm. It's trying to compensate. And, and there is something called a default mode network in the brain, which is more of these medial areas that sort of maintains homeostasis in the body. It's always on. Okay? It never rests when you sleep, when you're awake. And it's using most of the energy, probably 80% of your brain energy, to keep that going. Um, and if uh, my theory is in a lot of injuries, whether it's concussions or toxic in, in, in injuries, um, that, that, that network of you know, your default mode, which maintains, is disrupted. So people are working overtime, so they get tired easily, they don't have stamina. Um, and, and of course, you know, you're not ready to respond. It's sort of like uh, having a computer that's you know, always ready. Mm -hmm. your, your brain maintains a, a state where you're you, you can move that arm when you need to, or you can quickly think, you know, you're, you're in a ready state. But that's like I said, even when you're asleep, it's maintaining that. Uh, and when that's not operating, then you aren't usually feeling very balanced. And if you look at what happens in mold patients or other toxins, it isn't just their ability to stay focused or remember something. They're usually having physiological problems of uh, homeostasis. They can't regulate temperature. Um, they have hormonal issues, they can't regulate weight, uh, blood pressure problems, uh, almost any system can be impacted. Well, those are deeper brain areas, mm -hmm. uh, but they integrate into our conscious areas. The, the, the studies that have been done on other types of toxins usually show 60% of the time is frontal, 60% of the time is temporal, and then the brainstem may be 40, 50 percent, parietals, 15 percent, but I mean almost any area can be affected. We see in the mold a lot of uh, visual problems. Uh, some of that seems related more like the optic nerve, but, um, but definitely these executive areas are affected and maybe they're more affected because they are so involved in the emotional and physical regulation as well. We know that that is getting disrupted by the biotoxins.